Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Live Composing Show. It's so good to be back with you guys in the daytime. I've done a few night streams over the last week or so, and those were fun, but man, it's really, really cool to be finally back in the daylight, as funny as that sounds, uh, with my giant window over here and proper lighting. It's it's quite nice. Lots of energy. So I'm really excited for you guys um, because today I'm working on Dark Dice. I'm back in the saddle, back in work mode, kind of slowly transitioning back into work mode, I should say. I'm not really at full capacity yet, but just kind of chipping away an hour or two each day instead of the typical three or four or whatever. But I'm excited because uh, Dark Dice is a soundtrack that I've been working on for several years now alongside co-composers Brandon Boone and a guest track by David Wise, Donkey Kong Country composer, who had the opportunity of collaborating with and co-writing one of the tracks with. And I think we're up to, oh man, so definitely in the 20s, like 25 tracks, 30 tracks, something in that neighborhood. Um, we've already done over half of them, but now I'm, I'm doing a 13 track batch right now. And I'm currently, today, we're going to be looking at tracks one, two, three of the new portion of the soundtrack and potentially even track number seven. So kind of jumping around a little bit, but the goal right now is to get these suckers mixed, to get them ready to go for the show and the soundtrack and, and future releases and things like that. So it's very exciting. Um, and today you're gonna to have the opportunity to see me do two very different things. Typically when you join the show, you get to watch me live compose where I'm, I'm writing something from scratch, a blank empty session. But today this is actually the last part of the process where I've written the music or the other composers have written the music. We, we created the, the MIDI demos. We um, did the sample libraries and like the, the actual demos, got them approved and revised and everything. We did the sheet music and the orchestration. Um, we got the live um, Budapest ensembles, the choir and the strings to record live. We did all those sessions and then we did all of the soloist recordings. And here we are at the very end. I get the immense opportunity to put all of these elements together. And, and usually it's 80 to 100 tracks per song, if you will, per track. <clears throat> and it's a lot. Um, and you need something, a heavy-duty software such as Pro Tools to handle all this. The reason I use Pro Tools is it has a lot of really cool batch editing functions that make working in groups and working in aux channels really, really simple. And it, it allows me to make these huge edits like time warping and quantizing audio and batch stem exporting and all these different functions that um, you can just tweak like 15, 50 tracks at once if you need to. If you need to do one fade in, you can do it on everything. So it's really powerful for mixing quickly. So um, today you get to see two different parts of the mixing process. You get to see me finish three tracks that are already completely done. They just need like a handful of quick little revisions and you, I wanna show you those sessions. And then as time allows today, I'm also going to start a new track, Galen Hold, which is a winter city in this Dark Dice world. And um, it's all recorded, but now I have to combine all the elements together and actually make it sound good and balanced. So. Um, I don't talk a lot about the production or mixing side of, uh, you know, air quotes, Hollywood quality soundtracks, um, or maybe just AAA games. And this is technically an indie, indie project, but um, we're aiming for the highest possible quality. And maybe this could even win a Grammy. You never know. Um, but we're definitely pushing for the highest possible quality in hopes that um, this can get some recognition and notoriety. But more than that, just to make good music and to make sure that we're doing our very best. So uh, it's been a ton of fun. And as we jump into the session here, uh, I want to say a quick shout out to all the people in the chat right now. We have Brooks, Eric, Sector7, Carmine, Carmine, Carmen, duh, that's how you say your name, Carmen. Um, and Eric says, I got your book for Christmas, loving it so far. Thanks so much. And good to see you as well, Sector7. Um, I don't know what tons of sun means, but... <laughs> Brooks, I don't know. Is that Japanese? I don't know. Um, and Brooks says, thanks for the free contract template. That's generous. Absolutely. You got it. Uh, go grab that. Uh, it's in the the link right here. Let's see if I can point to it. You can see it right there. Uh, stephenmalin.com slash music dash contract. You can actually get a free $29 value game music contract. So if you 
always wondered about the business side. What the heck do I do negotiating with a developer? What are the rights involved? What are the terms involved? I have a two page. It's very small, very easy to understand a two page document that you can download and use. And I've used that religiously. I've used it literally, I don't know, 50 times, 60 times on a bunch of different projects. Uh, and it works every single time. Um, I've only had one developer ever that wanted to use their own contract instead of mine. Not a big deal. Um, so I think that's super cool and I hope that's valuable for you guys. Anywho, so today um, we're going to be working through three tracks to start. I'm going to be revising these. Um, so what that means is I actually got notes directly back from the team. Um, these are just a few things that they want edited. And from there, we're just going to export and, and get to show you the process. So let's jump into Pro Tools here. And I'll, tr I'll try to keep my face on screen where I can. But you'll notice how when I'm on the screen, it kind of blocks out a lot of your view. So if you just kind of bear with my voice for a little bit, that'd be cool. The um, first things first, on my master channel, I do have a meta plugin which is just a, a wrapped plugin that you can run any other plugin from. So I do have a J-bridged Voxingo recorder VST. Basically means you guys can hear my audio playing from the doll. Just like that. And it looks like it works perfectly. So a couple things. Uh, this is how I have things routed just so you can understand and now that you can see the final product, you'll see why I want to set up this way in future tracks, such as Galen Hold that we're going to do later today. And a quick shout out, since Brandon Boone is in the chat with us. What's up, Brandon? Everybody say, hey, what's up, Brandon? Uh, Brandon Boone is the composer of this track. This is called The Dark Lance. The next track we're going to do right after this is called All Shadow, which he also wrote. He also did The Neverborn God. I don't know if there's any more in this set that he worked on, but at least those three. Um, and he is a phenomenal composer. He writes a lot of ambient, spooky horror stuff, which is perfect for this soundtrack because my music is much more melodic and I don't want to say happy, but much more like on the epic side. His stuff is much more brooding and dark and, and ominous. And I think it's super cool that I have the opportunity to mix his music as well. So this is not my track, although I did work with orchestration and the sheet music and the live. And you know, I've had my hand in all of these things anyway, but he absolutely gets the credit for this one. Uh, it's super cool. Back to the show. So yeah, give him some love. He's in the chat with us today. Glad he can make it. Um, so just to quickly show you the best I can without taking like an hour to explain it. Um, I like to color code things. So anytime you see a bunch of tracks that are the same color, that just means it's one instrument type or instrument group. So everything selected, that's my strings from the Budapest strings. Down here we have string overdubs, which is just a, a second pass of strings. It's all one recording, just all the different mic positions. And then we have choir, and then we have choir overdubs, which is a second pass of choir and then down here I created an aux channel for each of those four groups that way I can control all of them and each of these auxes has an output to a bus routed to a an audio channel so I just have an audio channel for all the stems that I want to create and you can do whatever reverb you want on there like you can you can do whatever plugins you want on that channel um, the choirs I throw an s1 imager on the same exact parameters on all of my choir tracks because this spreads out the sound in a V shape instead of it being, um, you know, super close to the center. Because what I want are the strings to be on the outside and the choir to feel like it's on the inside. And then down here we have the live instruments, so dulcimer, hurdy-gurdy, and violin. And then all of the stems, which are all the electronic MIDI elements from the original track, which are all the gold. Not a ton, but they're mostly percussion. In fact, they're all percussion or like atmospheric synthy stuff, which blends very nicely. So in general, my goal is to make sure that all of the percussion and the, the synth elements, anything that's not a live instrument, it's very much distant and in the background. It should feel like it's, it's in the same space, but it's just kind of out there. Whereas the choir is gonna be front and center with a V shape. And then the strings are going to be 
even closer, very intimate, but more like a, a parabola shape, like an upside down U, where it's going to fill the whole space. So that's really the sound I'm going for, because otherwise there's just too much happening with 80 tracks, and it, it just gets too muddy, and that's always the challenge. So the way that I've routed the reverb is very, very important, because this actually completely changes the quality of the sound. Like this makes it sound like a million bucks right here. I have a separate reverb aux channel where I have 100%, so 100% wet of a hall verb. That's just two seat ether. Um, and what I've done is this is a separate aux and anything that I want to have reverb, I just do a send. So all of the strings have a send to the reverb. And I'm only doing negative 17 dB. It's not a lot, but it's just enough to give it some, some oomph. And then choir has the same. And then the soloists, I want either the same amount of reverb or slightly less to make them feel even closer to us, the audience. And then I just kind of go through and, and mix. So mixing is really just the process of things like crossfades. So like right here, it's taking two tracks and cr blending them together because they have two different volumes or two different takes and blending them together. Or it's, it's just slightly moving things around to make them to land nicely. Um, sometimes it's boosting the volume, sometimes it's lowering the volume, sometimes it's quantizing the audio to make sure that, like this, it's like perfectly on a grid of 16th notes or whatever, and in that case you'd have to do um, warp audio, right there, elastic audio in Pro Tools. So there's lots of options, there's lots of things we can do, um, but the main thing is it's supposed to sound good, full, rich, and we want it to sound expensive. So the notes that I have for today, um, only three notes. Two of them I can fix really, really easily. They were some quantizing audio that did not sound super good, uh, and that was in the choir. So one of the benefits of having a good team is they give me time code. So literally all I have to do is scrub to that moment. Let me actually do minutes and seconds. Let me go to, uh, this is, it's gonna be 2.53 is the moment that is in question here. So the note from the team was that the syllables on the choir sounded a little muddy here and not super legible, and it might be a quantizing error. So all I have to do is go into my warp menu, and I can already see that there's no warping happening on that particular section. Let me see if it's happening down here. And sure enough, there it is. There's the problem. So somewhere in here, some of my quantizi quantizing is uh, getting a little out of control. And uh, give me a second while I remove inappropriate chat in the live chat. All right, let's do some music. So let's do each choir part one at a time and let make sure that the quanti quantizing is lined up. One of the issues, here's what we're gonna have to deal with. Um, I need to delete all of my audio stems because that's what we're actually hearing right now. It's a little weird, but this is the way that I have it set up that it, it works really well for me. If I wanna hear what's going on, so if I just hit play, all I'm gonna hear is the reverb because that's how everything is routed to the reverb. So I need to um, shift click all of the stems that I have routed, which are just audio. And I'm going to hold Alt and Shift. And now you can really hear it. I'm gonna record, enable all of the stems. Oh, I see what I did wrong. I'm not supposed to record, enable that first one. There we go. I figured it out. There we go. Now 
now my mutes actually work. That's the whole purpose of doing that right there. So if I hit mute, the whole group will mute. That dulcimer is too loud. a little bit louder at the beginning. Okay, now back to the moment in question is down here. I hear the note that they're talking about because it sounds good to me. I also make sure that I'm lined up with my time code. Yeah, I am. Hmm, let's find it. I don't think it's that choir. I think it's going to be the, the overdubs that perhaps are off. So what I'm doing right now is I'm editing the timing of each note of this overdub section, which is the, the males going yump bump, bump bump. So one of the ways I can do that is I can chop that into its own little section. Da, 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 da. Let's do eighth note quantizing. And it uses these little markers that I can edit. So that you can kind of hear it's a little bit off, so let's slip it. This is the kind of meticulous stuff you got to do to make it really shine. That's the one. That's what he didn't like. I bet it. Cool. I think we solved it. Super useful. Cool. Let's hear that in context with the other choir layered on top to make sure it all fits well in that section.
sounds fantastic. <laughs> Weird. Oh, look. That one was missing. <laughs> the uh, violin was not enabled. I'm like, why do I hear just reverb? Great note from Prodigy. Uh, it says in the chat, yep, definitely spooky. Not sure if I'd be able to sleep after mixing this. Sounds great. That's really funny because I've been mixing these at night <coughs> right before bed. So that's really funny. I think it's actually quite soothing, even though it is spooky. I like bumping up that violin. I'm glad I did that. It was a little too quiet. And the other note is at 4.53, there is a crash symbol that sounds weird. That's funny. I don't think it looks, that sounds bad at all, but let's see. Isolate it. Yeah, that's not warped at all. That's actually the, the natural sound. I get what he's saying, though. It has like a little bit of a pop to it. Let me see if we can. Hmm. Replace it with something. Well said, Brooks. The chat says, there is something about polyphonic choir lines that are soothing, but always hit that primal sense of unease that other instruments don't. I totally agree. There's also text involved, and the text is super spooky in this stuff. It's the original audio file, not my. Let me see if I can find a substitute. This guy that sounds weird. Yikes. Um, Brandon, since you're in the chat with me, maybe we can find a quick solution. I don't know what library you used, but maybe I can use one that's similar. That can get the job done real quick. Let's grab... Honestly, what I'm thinking of is, um, what am I doing? Instrument track. Is that what I did? Stereo instrument track. Let me 
grab. Good old play. The percussion's all programmed, so it's just an error and some, some export somewhere. I'm going to grab... I need some kind of um, a symbol scrape. So let's do a, all symbols from play orchestra. And I'm sure we can find something here that'll get close enough to still get the idea. Because it's the only symbol scrape in the whole piece. And I am going to route it to the same. So that's bus 37. That way we can actually hear it. No big deal. Easy fix. And what's up, Amaya? Glad you could make it. All right, let's open this sucker up. I just want to find any sound, really. This is a bunch of things. I don't ever use the MIDI window, so I'm, I'm like an idiot with Pro Tools MIDI. Um, let's do, what is it? Blocks, I guess. I'm so bad with MIDI and Pro Tools. There we go. There's the menu I wanted. <laughs> it's just this. There we go. the most amateur way to do it but I'm gonna <laughs> it's fine where are all the scrapes at there we go there we go up top like that right that's probably the closest I'm, I'm gonna have was pretty good. We'll just fix the volume and stuff. So Brandon in the chat, you let me know if that sounds good to you. There's like a double, double one. Now just line it up that solves the problem. I like it. And it gets rid of that, that warbly sound. One more time in context. I'll throw it into the same room reverb that way it, it feels a little bit more in the room cool got the approval from Brandon <laughs> it looks so stupid I have a band-aid on right now yeah <laughs> uh, I don't recommend this by the way um, three weeks ago smashed my thumb and then the car door don't do that because it's the most painful recovery of anything in my life. It's the worst. My thumb turned black. Ugh. Still recovering. It was the worst. I couldn't like play piano or anything for like six days. It was crazy. Cool, so now the last little piece, the last little thing to do. Um, one of our teammates, Travis, recorded this beautiful bell in Germany. And he wanted to see if I could find a way 
to incorporate it into the track. Since this is the Darklands track, he wanted to just see if we can make it work. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just importing the file, I'm converting it, making sure that it, it ends up as a 48K track. Let's make it a new track. And in case this does fit the bill, I am gonna still make a stem for it. And let me change the colors of these two so I don't get all confused. There we go. Because um, these are these two are not stems; they're, they're actually just audio files. So this bell is just one hit, but I want to route it to my stems. Let's just call it bells, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So bus, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Let's see what it sounds like. So there it is. Um, Pretty good bell sound. It's a lot of white noise because it's live. Probably gonna keep the second one only. Let's find a way to just very briefly fade it in. Like that. And let's try to EQ it. I mean, this might be a total dud, but he wanted it me to at least try. Let's try to get all that white noise off by lowering the high end. And really hitting that mid low. Let's do the, um, turn the an analyzer on. Oops, there it is. Pre-EQ. It's not super clean, but that's okay. And we'll do a fade out and I'll do a send on this guy, which I want it to have a ton of reverb. Oh, I have to solo the reverb to hear it. Ah, oh, there it is. That sounds nice. Listen to that. nice let's change the I like that no nah, I'm just gonna do a straight fade out that's pretty nice let's see if it even fits in the context of everything like he wanted it to and Brandon ultimately you get the the final call here and as far as the whether it fits or not so here's the intro. Cool. Let's try changing the pitch octave down Let's see if that kind of massages it a little bit let's do 100% mix we'll go down an octave Pretty cool. It's a little late. I'm at eleven twelve or eleven point two dB negative. Kind of works with the gong.
what I'll do is I'm going to, every time the bells come in, so like every four bars, I'm just going to duplicate it. Let's drag this up to where the bells are so I can actually see what's going on. And I'm going to actually cut this to the grid. The grid. Like this. Turn my grid on to just like perfect bars, bar mounts. Come on. There we go. Um, let's see if that works a little bit better. Let's see if it sounds good. Hmm. Okay, then here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a function called consolidate clip, which adds the silence like that. And now that I'm on a grid, of whole notes. I'm going to just copy this sucker over to every time it comes in. And hope that it actually works. Okay, so now I know that it doesn't work quite yet. But it's going to. It's a fun little addition to the party basically just trying to find where that transient is and get rid of it and this is meticulous and annoying but it, you know this is the stuff we do there we go now it's all lined up and I'll just do the tiniest little fade. I don't know why it sounds so bad. Hmm, what am I doing wrong, guys? Back to bells. I might be editing the wrong thing, to be honest. Yeah, it wasn't even his fault the whole time. Okay, now we can finally do something productive. There we go. Like that. Yay. So all I'm doing is, is putting this wherever those big bells are already happening. Which is a lot. I don't know if we want that many, but they're there. It's there as an option. See how that feels. <laughs> this is not why anyone came to this stream today to watch me edit bells, but <laughs> that's just what it turned into. <laughs> Okay, now in context, let's see what any of that sounds like.
reverb. Listen to that. I just, it's better giving it its own reverb instead of trying to mix it into the all the orchestral stuff. It's not, it kind of has this huge sound. this because that hissing you're hearing is my fault there we go fixed it i think what did i do wrong oh pro tools there we go Fantastic. All right. I think this track is ready. I addressed the three issues that the team had. So here we go. Now I'm going to export. The way I do this is I basically just equip or enable all of the stems that I want to be used. And then I just go to grid mode, select the two markers that I want to record in between, which I've already done all that. And then I hit record. So let's enjoy. This is the Darklands, hopefully the final version. Let's export it.
All right, cool. So from there, I now have all of these stems that I can send to the team by right or just clicking on any one stem and then I can right click the stem in the clips, export clip as file, and then they just have that one stem or all of the stems. If I want a master track, then I just remove the record enable from all of those and just bounce normally. And this would be the Darklands version three. And you can do it offline at that point if you wish. Let's see if that's gonna take too long. Ugh, it still takes a long time. It takes a few minutes. Um, it's too long. <laughs> <laughs> Let's close that and let's open up all shadow. Let's move on to the next one, shall we? The all shadow, another really cool track and good. I got the mwah, the the chef kiss from the composer Brandon Boone. So must be doing something right. All right, let's see if we can fly through these changes a little bit quicker than last time. I know I did. So explaining throughout that last one. Um, but everything's the same. Everything's the same uh, layout in this one. So as long as I turn on my meta plugin thingy, we should be able to hear it. Let's test. So cool. Okay, for this one, I have a handful of notes, but they're all pretty simple. So I'm going to jump right to those moments and then we can bounce it out and enjoy that together. So, first one is right here at the 18 second mark. The note is vocals come in slightly early in a weird pre echo way. Interesting. So it's right at 18. <laughs> So they're talking about this fade in. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that because it's pretty much baked in. Let's see what we can do. Literally all I can do is bump really, really hard the first like second and then fade it in to the next. Like that. I want to get creative, I can warp it. Just that clip and stretch it out. It kind of works. Like that. Just to give it like the tiniest bit more of a chance before it breaks, like there. That works. That was a good solution. Oh, this one is just a mistake on the choir that I don't I can't fix. But I can get creative by literally just like removing the one the the altos that came in early and do this. Maybe that's all I have to do. Like that. Oh, I know what's happening. <laughs> Fucking idiot now. It's not double tracked, but I'm over here adjusting stuff and it's not doing anything. I'm so sorry. Now I feel like an idiot. So that, that was a dud. Let's do that again. I do still want to do this little stretchy stretch. Just not so extreme. So now, if I do just that first syllable and stretch it out, maybe till there. 
lights to line it up better. But then I have to crossfade the two. That looked too weird. Okay, I'm getting a little too warp happy. All right, let me remove the break. This time you just gotta have to experiment a little bit. Well, all, all I needed to do was put another marker there, then stretch that one. That's all I had to do. There it is. It's a tricky one. <laughs> so here's an example of I'm going to have to stretch the end of a syllable and the beginning of a syllable. And then fade them. To help mask that this, this was a wrong note. So I do that. Then I stretch. This is so awkward. I hate doing this kind of stuff, but sometimes... You gotta deal with what you have. It's hard, can't hide it because it's <laughs> front and center. So it's like either you keep the mistake or you, you remove that, that note. So perhaps the solution is a longer fade out. This can allow it to try. Take this final syllable and just stretch whatever we can out of it, which would require taking the fade off. Sorry, Brandon, for destroying your piece here, but it's kind of necessary. So what I'm saying is like to stretch this. That actually really works. And now by adding the fade, makes it a little bit less crazy. Cool. That's convincing. Twenty-four.
bass got too loud in this moment. But I turned down the, the live strings here and I think that helped. So fat right there. I love that moment. Other note is at 125. They want the bells way louder here. That's the same moment we just did. Oh, it's the quasi bell. It's this thing. Whoops, this whole time. That's what he's talking about. Okay. Let's crank those up, see what happens. Was just the audio quantizing feels a little weird here at 211 in the choir. So let's see what's going on there. There's no. That's literally just them singing, so I don't know. Probably that. So maybe that's a fading issue. Because it's happening right on my crossfade. See what's happening. Maybe I can just do a, a smaller crossfade. That helped. So the note here was to, to bump up the Sopranos volume, and I think I achieved that. Let's give it more power in that moment. And the last thing is at 234, the metal warp sound can go or be EQ'd slightly less to be less overt. Interesting. Where is that? Probably these. The bells. Probably too loud. All those squeaky sounds. I just said that Brooks. I love the order. 1886 by Jason Graves. This is not even my track though. This is uh, this is Brandon's track. So 
props to him for writing such cool stuff. I'm curious if he's influenced by Jason Graves at all. But yeah, cool. This track's done, so let's export it. I hit all the notes. Yeah, I told you just a few. So let's um, live bounce the whole track as we've done before. And I will mute myself as we get to enjoy. This is the all shadow. So this is like the, the, the bad guy. I'll leave it at that. The all shadow. Enjoy. This is such a cool track. This is like one of the coolest, by far the coolest thing Brandon Boone's ever written. I just think it's magnificent. He needs to like shout it to the rooftops because it's so good. So let's listen to The All Shadow by Brandon Boone.
All right, how cool is that? What a really cool track. And like before, I'll go through and export this as needed. And the cool thing is I already have all the stems, so I can literally just export stems plus master as needed. As the team needs, it's all baked in. Cool, let's move on to another track. I'm glad that that went pretty quick. Um, so let's close that. Go to the third one for the day, which is my track in defense of Eastwood, which is the one of the team's favorite tracks. Um, I'm gonna be very careful about what I say next because it's kind of under the radar, but um, you guys are cool, right? You're cool, right? Um, I can't share all the details, but let's just say that this track was shared. I worked really hard to get a good mix on this track so it could be shared with a very notable Japanese game composer who has agreed to join our team. And I'll leave it at that until I can release official, real public information. Because of course, in life, things can always change, but um, the Dark Dice team is growing. And I, I'm just, it's, is this a dream? Is this real life? So this is my favorite track on the whole soundtrack by far. It's the Eastwood theme, but it's in a battle track style. And there's a few notes I need to hit here, uh, but not much. So I'll definitely play the track at the end, but my gosh, I can't believe who we're about to work with. Absolute dream come true. Um, and this is the track used to kind of seal the deal. Um, so here we go. Let's pop over to my right screen, and I am going to have to add the plugin so that we can hear it. This is called Meta Plugin. So if anyone's on Windows and needs to run Fox and Go Recorder, this is how you do it. Just attach it. Just a little audio input lines. And then double, come on. And then double click. <laughs> double click the Vox and Go Recorder and then do your little settings real quick. This is just for streaming purposes. It has no bearing on the actual sound of anything there we go make sure we can all hear it always do a little test there we go let me actually make them audible hey amaya no gu no guessing allowed because then have to say yes or no no guessing I can find the moment. This is my favorite moment in the entire thing. And I joked about it on one of the previous streams. I want to see if I can uh, just solo. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> uh, I made a, a, a YouTube video about this just for fun. A little YouTube short on my channel if anyone cares. Um, but it's this little moment. I want to see uh, what video game does this sound like. I want to see if anyone can find it. I have to, of course, find the moment. I think it's... Gosh, I have so many tracks. Is it this? Wow, I found it. Give me a second. I have so many tracks. I have to solo. Choir, choir, choir. Choir, choir, choir. There. No. Ugh, it's worth it. Stop yelling at me, people. I'll give you a hint. See if you can hear those words. Totally unintentional. I love writing for live choir. 
So wonderful. All right, anyway, back to the show. Let's uh, actually mix this thing. There's just a couple of things I need to, to change. If you, if you, if anyone else heard Sephiroth, you are correct. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Do a couple edits and then we'll play the whole thing. So 259, we need to change the Herdy and cello need to go up. I'll give one more hint for anyone that if anyone that really knows game music, they will know that this four bar phrase, it's not stolen, but it's almost borrowed. It's, it's an idea from a game series that is very near and dear to my heart that this is a common chord progression in said game series and said person probably heard it and said, whoa, that sounds like me. Here we go. This part this is my favorite part. The whole dang soundtrack. These four bars. <laughs> major chord over a minor chord is that what you call it maybe there's some technical term for it that i never learned but i just know it sounds really cool and i use it a lot anyway um there's one more little note and it's at 4 23 i also did it in the conspiracy track which i'll get to another day <laughs> Four twenty three the note is to increase the cello note or the strings note, the last sustained swell note. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um not even sure what to do with that information. Maybe I can do this. I can turn off my groups for a second and maybe I can just hand select the violins. Maybe that's what they're really saying. I'll just grab the violins one and two and then increase those only. That solved what he was wanting. That way, like this melodic na, 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 thing, which is in the violins but not in the viola, cello, bass, which are all doing the chun 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 chun. 
even though it all looks like a giant blob, I know that about the music. So that's why I chose to increase those only and then crossfade into the next little section there. And speaking of which, I really should crossfade. These are very different. I should totally crossfade these. Let me grab the entire string section. Go back to slip mode and let's just do a tiny little crossfade. So it's not so awkward. <laughs> And think, having a stereo dulcimer, um, and I went through all the soloists. I asked every soloist to record three mic positions, a close two stereo mics, well, two mono mics, which makes a stereo pair, and then one stereo pair far. So I typically did an XY position in the front of the instrument, and then an XY, kind of like a V shape, right? in the far end of the room. So I tried to get close and far for violin, cello, hammer dulcimer, hurdy-gurdy. <clears throat> and the hurdy-gurdy, as well as the hammer dulcimer, we also did mics inside the instrument. And I took all these mics and I made one permanent mix for every instrument. That way it's consistent across the entire soundtrack. And that's what I landed on with the dulcimer was to have a little bit of far mic, but mostly close, intimate, nice, Stereo and yeah, uh, Rinto soundtracks totally. I I, I read the uh, comment that have ever listened to the Avatar, uh, well Avatar: The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra soundtracks. Yes, I adore those. I absolutely adore those. I have a feeling if I didn't do video games, I would probably be doing anime music. I haven't had that opportunity before, but I would totally take it if someone offered me an anime show. I just I love that music so much. This a certain style, very Japanese. Yeah. I'm. Born in the wrong country, I suppose. <laughs> All right, let's fix, finish this. Oh, I, now I know what they're talking about. Well, I don't regret boosting the melody here. The team is asking for this. It's this note. They just, they gave me the wrong time code by a few seconds. It's that, no. I wonder if it's the solo cello. What do you guys think? No, it's actually the, the cellos in here. That's a really specific note. How did he hear that? My gosh. Our producer, Travis, is like an audio wizard. He just hears things that no one else hears. And he's, he's he is a musician, but he's more a producer than a musician. It's just wild, the stuff that he can hear. I didn't even know that that was the cello in all of that. But he literally heard this out of all that stack and asked for it to be boosted. Um, so let me take off my group. Let's find just the cellos, which is like here. I'll do bass as well, because it's all connected. And maybe I just chop off that part. Let's boost it by a few dB, and let's do a crossfade. <laughs> If you heard that, that's bananas. Yeah, Brandon says insane ear. Let's make it like 12 dB and just laugh at it. <laughs> Dang, I don't even know if 12 dB is enough. It's really hidden in there. But they give us like 30 dB of headroom anyway, so you can bump this as much as you want. You're not going to peek. There it is. You hear it now? good point Brooks that our producer is likely listening on less than stellar headphones just by the nature of not being a composer um, he probably could be listening on you know <laughs> um, airpod pros or whatever and, and seriously when you listen in a very different environment than the person who mixes there other people are going to hear things that I certainly can't hear 
Um, and that's why I do try to listen on my phone, just like the basic speakers. I use AirPods. I'll listen in the car. I, I really do try to listen in a ton of different environments. I have two different pairs of headphones I'll even switch between just to see what sounds different, make sure it sounds good in all environments. So you never know. That solved it. I cannot believe you heard that. That's a cool note though. Because it, it like kind of swells us into the end. And I think we're done. So let's pop over here and let's export this sucker. Well, I'm not exporting anything. I'm actually just bouncing stems, but let's bounce the stems to my favorite track. Maybe it's my second favorite track. Either way, it's my favorite track that I've mixed so far because it's so fun and dynamic and just changes all the time. And that's good. I like it. I like it. And before I finalize, I do want to check my, my LUFS, my L-U-F-S over here, my maximizing page of ozone. I want to make sure that we're not peaking or, or getting too loud. does it naturally down here lefts negative 14 so i guess i don't have to do anything i'm assuming that's how that works it says learn threshold i don't want to learn the threshold the target is already 14 yet i think i'm doing that correct because the threshold should be i know what i did there we go i'm being stupid the goal is negative 14 lefts that way it feels nice and dynamic that's what everyone wants for their final products deliveries. So when I master, that's that's what I'm aiming for. And that's the natural default of ozone anyway. So anyway, let's finish. Let's uh, export this sucker. And by export, I mean bounce my stems. Here we go, enjoy.
All right, friends, we are done with the, the three tracks that needed revising. So just like the others, I will export that when we're done here today. Um, so let's close that out. And what I'm going to do is let's take a quick break. And then I will be back where I'm going to start a brand new mix from scratch. And it's going to be for another track called Galen Hold. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back in just a minute and we will continue the party. Glad you guys are here. Be right back. Friends, welcome back to the Live Composing Show, where today I am live mixing some Dark Dice tracks, which is a ton of fun. We've already knocked out three of these suckers in the last couple hours, um, revising some elements. But today I want to open up a new track. This is Galen Hold. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. I've already imported the, the basic elements. And I think a few months, or I guess two months ago or so, I did some very basic, just like imported the stuff but i don't think i've done anything with it to be honest so this is going to be really fun and refreshing to hear something new that hasn't been stuck in my head forever so um this is the ice town galen hold um so the first thing i want to do before i even listen to a note is make sure all my routing is correct it looks like i don't have any of the stems set up yet which is fine um but something i want to do right off the bat is create a new aux track this is going to be called reverb And the reverb track is literally just a reverb. The master currently is just going to have an L1 limiter set to negative 0.1 dB. That way nothing clips. And the reverb, I'm going to do a bus. I'm just going to choose bus 100, 101. That way it's easy to find. And the goal here is to create sins. So it looks like the ensembles already had some of their own preset sins in their studio so let me get rid of all of those very quickly by just holding down shift and alt and it gets rid of them from every channel and now we have a blank slate all right and i've already gone through and grouped strings string overdubs and choir separately so at least that's set up a little bit of a headache i don't have to do right now and the reverb i'm going to put hall one hundred percent and then I'm gonna send things to it. So strings, let's start off. Let's see if a bus of negative 17B has been my sweet spot recently. And I can always adjust. So that means it's it's hard to say how much percent that is, but it's probably like 20, 25%, maybe a little bit less of the total reverb. And I'm gonna copy that over to the choir and strings. The choir, I want to make a V shape out of a stereo imager. And that way everything is kind of already somewhere where it needs to be. I am going to mute all of the stems. Cause it looks like I don't even have any uh, solo is in here yet. So that's something I need to import as well. So let me import from all of my sessions. 
thankfully have all this pre-organized. Let me import this from a folder called Soloists and I just have them all by name and I'll look to see which ones have Galen hold. So we have, ooh, we have Duduk on this one. Oh yes, some woodwinds, that's gonna be nice. So we got some Duduk. We have, here a Dulcimer, nice. I'll show you right here, all the people that we're dealing with here. So Galen hold, uh, Hurdy Gurdy. Yep, we have some Hurdy, but I also have some combined ones. Yeah, there we go. Hurdy Gurdy, and I went ahead and converted all of them to 48K, 24 bit. That way there's no converting that's necessary. So let's see, we had Kristen Nygus on Duduk, Kyle Paxton on Hammer Dulcimer, Johannes Gorkian Hellman on Hurdy Gurdy. Um, who else is on this track? Uh, we have Kristen Nygus also on Recorder for Galen Hold. Ooh, and she improved on this one. Yes. Come on. Are we not going to work? There we go. Let me try that again. It, it froze on me. Okay, we have normal pass, and then we have an improv pass. Cello, surely we have cello. That was um, Andrew Dunn. Cello, see this is the fun part for me, is like getting all of the, the sources. Um, Mateus Garcia Souza is one of the greatest violinists ever, bar none. I've never worked with a, with a better violinist than him. And so I record him for everything. And then I think that's it for this track. That should be it. And I do want to double check to see if there are any hurdy-gurdy drones. Um, yes, there is. So what I'm also doing for the soundtrack is I created a new um, hurdy-gurdy sample instrument just for this. It's not for sale or anything, at least not right now. Um, okay, let's see. Let's color all of these tracks. I know this is kind of the boring stuff, but I know that you guys like to see this sometimes. So those are all my soloists. Um, and here's the fun part. I, I need to make a new stereo instrument. And I created a contact patch. Go figure. You guys know that I like to do that a lot. Okay, contact. And this is going to be my hurdy-gurdy drones. So we never have drones in this soundtrack. Let's see, ethnic. There's my hurdy-gurdy. So I made my own drones patch from Johannes. And I had him record two times every pitch on his instrument for drones. Because this entire soundtrack has drones underneath it, and I wasn't going to ask him to record like an hour of drones. I'd much rather him record 15 minutes of drones every single pitch, and then I can play them in myself. So there it is, the Dark Dice Hurdy Gurdy Drones. It's not pretty, it's literally just thrown together, but it's very nice. And most importantly, it is him the same soloist on the rest of the soundtrack and it's mixed the exact same as the solos. So it, it all is going to feel right. It's all going to feel appropriate. So HG, oops, HG drones. Oh, what fun. This is going to be a lot of fun today. Uh, let me grab recorder. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually lining up the MIDI audio so that I can actually see where all these clips are supposed to go. I don't have to guess. Guessing leads to lots of errors. I don't want errors. So Hammer Dulcimer, Hurdy Gurdy, Drones, Hurdy Gurdy. There it is. It's just part of this whole stem process, you know? Hurdy Gurdy goes here. Who am I missing? I'm missing cello and violin. So there's cello, there's violin. I'll put them at the top. There. 
is some cello, violin. So this is the kind of organization that you need to go through at the beginning so that when you start mixing, you're not having to worry about, oh no, where's my track? Everything's organized, everything looks good. Um, and I'll take my face off so that you can see a little bit better. So the HG drones bit, what I'm trying to do is, I mean, it's only, see, it's only one spot. So let's just solo that and let's see if we can make this happen. So that's the original and it sounds like garbage because it's fake and MIDI. Um, so what I'm going to do is, okay, my own. Right here. Gosh, I really hate Pro Tools MIDI, but what you going to do? You guys still with me? Hopefully this is interesting. I don't have to do this with you watching, but if it's interesting, I'll show you. So here is the patch. We're trying to match this note. Yum. That already sounds better to me. And it has all the cool like fuzzies. That's it. So we're gonna go till bar, looks like 29. That's all there is to it, folks. So now I can get rid of the MIDI version and now I have a beautiful hurdy gritty drone hanging out waiting for us. There it is. And I'll go ahead and make him blue as well so we can all look the same. All right, um, the last little bit here is just kind of lining stuff up. So let's hear this duduk. Man, I'm so excited. And I'll go ahead and throw on, no, you guys don't hear my audio. Are you kidding me? I guess I haven't played much. Thank you so much for saying that before I got way in the weeds. That's right, of course you can't because I didn't put on, <laughs> it's a blank session. I never threw on my boxing recorder. You really didn't miss anything. You just missed me playing one single note <laughs> of a hurdy-gurdy. So thank you. Let me put this on. This is just part of streaming and changing sessions. Whoops. There we go. Let's make sure you can hear stuff. Um, I was going to solo Galen Hold Duduk. Oh, it sounds so good. Let's grab reverb right there. Make sure he's on. And we're going to do a send. I know it's so much set up, but it really is worth it. There we go. Cool. Oh, that's gorgeous. It's just to kind of take it around, slide it around till the blue regions match the yellow regions. And I should be able to do that. the same instrument we use as a lead for North Realm, which is my clo collab with uh, David Wise track. We use Duduk as a feature instrument and it, it's like the North sound, the, the icy winter. It's very cold and lonely, very haunting. Kind of sounds like a clarinet mixed with a flute. 
such a beautiful, rich, sad instrument. Let's throw some choir and strings in there just so we can understand what's happening. Oh, this could be gorgeous. Oof. I already got goosebumps. Uh, muted strings. They're so beautiful. doing some a new track <sighs> like i like the, the ones we've done but i've been doing them for a long time so i've been hearing them for a long time different versions and stuff it's just so refreshing to hear something fresh and new um all right let's grab the recorder let's get the recorder in place so the recorder it's over here let me slip it in like crawling with goose gums. So beautiful. Nothing like live woodwinds either. It's a nice change of pace. Since I've done so much strings on this soundtrack, it's nice to like have some feature woodwinds. Something I don't write for a lot. Of course, we still have cello here and violin. So let's, let's sneak them in. It's one at a time. That's what I like to do is just one at a time. Let's, let's find their spot. class musicians like these are people who are on a lot of the big video game soundtracks that we all know and love so what a treat so there's the cello let me find the next spot for him
in place. Beauty and the Beast vibes. Magical. their reverbs to the same negative 10 db and they're both pan 20 percent left 20 percent right So do a nice fade out there. Beautiful line. That's Matthias for you, man. Gorgeous violin player. All right. Let's uh, get the hammer dulcimer in. Looks like he plays from the very beginning. Cool. though. Thank you. 
of a head. opportunity to make the hurdy gurdy left <clears throat> panned left and then the cello panned right
is getting really, really nice. Just labeling some stuff. Tracks. to the more mixing territory. I can import my master channel from my previous tracks, which in this case goes here. I can get rid of this one. Just like that. And of course, turn this back on so you guys can hear it. Now with that boost in the EQ, it should sound like our other track. Why are we not playing? No. Oh, so it doesn't even start until. There we go. That's the end. So that was a really fun way to get, get started on a new track. It's certainly not done. It needs a lot more tweaking, but that's pretty cool how much we were able to get done just by importing the solos and lining them up and all that kind of stuff. So this stuff takes several hours to, to get one of these done, but I'm excited for where we're headed. Um, thank you guys for hanging out today. I'm going to wrap the party there. Um, but we got quite a bit done in the last couple hours. So I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your week. I'll continue to work on these mixes until they're all done. So you guys have a wonderful day, wonderful week. Thanks for hanging out for the amount of time you did. And I'll see you guys 